Hey, what's up guys? You're watching Bob's Decline, and today we're gonna to be taking a look at DSL grounds. What are they, and in what circumstances do we use them? So this job we just got done checking out, I'm in the middle of the woods right now. It's, it's ideal for a set of DSL grounds. So just before we get started, it's important that I do mention everything you see in this video, in fact, all my videos, they're according to the standards for the company that I work for. They're to be used as guidelines only. I want you guys to always adhere to the company you're working for as guidelines or the guidelines of the geographical area you're in. So what we've got, a passerby saw some lines down in the woods here, and they're really in the woods. A tree come down and ripped it completely off our system. So this is... This is the pole, this side line's been open, cut out door moved, and the riser's been untapped for probably many years. But you can see the neutral wire just dangling there, and the primary, you can kind of see the epoxy leader hanging, the primary was ripped right off the pole. So that wire, it's all down on the ground and along that easement see a couple of the poles there now. I think the neutral still hooked up on that pole. The primary is ripped right off. It is still connected to the dead end pole. So we're not going to bother fixing that today. It's been like that for who knows how long. The office is aware. We've already got a work order detailed up to send a crew to take out those poles, clean up the wire and everything. But we don't want to leave here with that wire laying on the ground. It is on the ground, the primary is literally laying on the ground, but we do still have to treat it as energized. And uh, we're gonna grab my belt and hooks and climb up on the dead end pole where the primary is still attached. And we're gonna install a ground on that. So the reason I wanted to share this whole DSO ground thing with you guys today, in a few videos I had some questions about grounds asking why I was removing someone else's tag or closing someone else's switch. Our permit system, our ponding and grounding, our, for lack of better words, lockout tagout system, it's a lot different than that in what you'd see of an electrician or an inside wireman. Where our work site, it's not just inside a building where everyone is working out of. Our work site's the entire province sometimes, especially when you're talking transmission lines. You you can have a switchman that's literally three four hours away. So. Once there's a permit of some of any sort taken out on the line, we will have what is called a permit holder. So that permit holder has to be on the job site. If you're working transmission lines, the job site might be middle of the woods, 100 miles from the nearest protection point, from the nearest switch. So I could be a switchman on behalf of the permit holder. All my instructions have to go through both the power system operator as well as a permit holder. But once I have an authorization through those two entities, then I can actually operate the switch and remove the tag. On the distribution side, this is our job site right here where the wires are down. I can't take out a permit and put grounds on that and then leave. So what we're gonna do, we're still gonna ground the lines. It doesn't have to be dismantled today. So instead of an actual work permit, we're gonna have a conditions abnormal tag which is, is similar to a permit, but the switch location is gonna be tagged both in the system and in the field, but under the authority of our dispatch. So DSO stands for Distribution System Operator. When a crew comes by next week, they will simply have to contact the DSO, the dispatcher, and indicate the, the number that's on the tag to be working on site. Dispatch will then surrender the ground that's on the line under their authority to whomever's gonna take the permit. So that they're able to both work on this line as well as remove that ground once they're done. So this is one of our condition abnormal tags here. And as I mentioned, it says do not operate without proper authority. And whomever has that proper authority is going to be listed on the back. There's gonna be a reference number, the permit number installed on. That's gonna be the switch number installed by and in the reasons we will put the proper authority as well as the reason for why. I'm just using this tag 
to put a zip tie on my grounds because I'm gonna leave them on site here so that the crew can return them to me once they do the work. And this is kind of neat. We introduced this feature into our tags a couple years ago where we've got this clear sticky stuff here and it'll actually fold down over onto the tag. So when it gets wet, the water's not gonna bleed your marker. Just installed that on the ground that I'm gonna leave on site so I can get that fella back. All right, so let's head back into the work area. This is, this is gonna suck. I got a lot of gear to carry. All right, so we're up here now. Man, that was a heck of a hike. I'll show you guys the house right in there. I'm not gonna walk through that mess again, but trust me when I say it's completely dilapidated. That'll never be hooked up again. So the triplex is still attached to the pole and we can see the primary is still attached on this end coming down to the ground. That's why we didn't walk right straight up that easement because of the down primary. So this guy swaying back and forth in the wind right here, that's, that's the primary. There's no danger of step tension where I'm standing. Probably the closest hazard, that little tiny tree. I wouldn't get any closer to it than that. If that were energized, there could be some step potential near that tree. And if we look down the easement, way down, that's the tree that caused this mess. Took out the primary end neutral, ripped it right off the mainline pole. So first thing we're gonna do, we'll take our hot stick. We're gonna check potential right from the ground here instead of having to carry that up the pole with me. And then we'll have to climb up the pole because the neutral's ripped off and way down that way. All right, so first thing we're gonna check for potential in that primary wire, which I fully expect for there to be none. We'll set that on 4 kV. And we're all good there, of course. All right, so a few things here as we climb, guys. I wouldn't normally climb with my rubber gloves and bring the stick and the ground up with me, but we're going up for one very simple task, and I'll just take my time instead of bringing stuff up and down on the hand line. So I do want to point out that, so I do want to point out position on the pole. Because of the tree falling, this pole, you probably can't tell, but it's leaning this way. So if we try to climb on this side of the pole, my body wants to swing over this way. If I climb up on the underside, I'm not gonna swing around, but it's a lot harder to climb up on the inside of a pole than on the top side of the lean. Now the pole's working with me to climb instead of against me. So as I mentioned, we already did check potential in that primary. We, we're gonna put this end on the neutral with our hot stick. That way we're not getting any closer to that primary.
Now this guy here is going to be tricky where there's no tension on it. We'll use that neutral as leverage a little bit. Try to, there we go. Snap that on. Not sure how well you guys can see that view from up here. Pretty neat in the fall when all the trees are turning colors. She's quite the view. I can see the city. Oh, we're about 50, 60 kilometers out, I would guess. It's also important to mention that if this particular job was in town, we, we wouldn't just ground the down lines. We would be cleaning that up right away. But we're out in the middle of nowhere, no houses around, except for that dilapidated old one. Most often we'll handle a job in this manner during storm work. This, this location here, it's extremely remote. But we'll have a crew here in the next couple of days. Come with probably three, four guys and rip that whole line down. But where, where DSO grounds are most commonly used is during storm, when you've got lines down all over the city. There's not enough crews, there's not enough linemen around to have one stationed at every single location that there's a wire down during those big hurricanes. So when a crew comes across some down lines, if it's four days worth of work, it's, it's no circumstances when they'll install the grounds, make the scene as safe as possible until the lines can be put back up in the air. So just to give you guys an idea of the area, that's the road behind me, that's the road in front of me. There's like a couple camps along this stretch, but the main purpose of this area, you can't really see it from here, it's up the hill about a kilometer but there's a bunch of communication towers radio towers a couple real tall guys up on the top of this mountain so we've got our tag we've got our tag number 95195 installed on 804 so19 which is indicated on the switch number on the pole right above that 470 you can hardly read it especially with my super unsteady hand and out of focus there we go installed by me Primary down, DSO grounds at EDO 470, EDO 4, 470 R2. So, interesting fact about pole numbers, that 470 means we're 470 span from either the Saab or the main road, and the R2 means right, right hand turn, going up the line, we're two poles in. If it said 470 L2, we'd be on the other side of the road, two poles in. And last but not least, we threw a staple in our tag. A lot of times we'll just tuck them in the switch number there, which you can now see is 804SO19. But this is going to be here for a couple days. We don't want that to blow away, so we've secured it with a staple as well. So thanks for checking in, guys. Lots of great stuff coming up, and we'll see you all soon.